Schools need to control pests to make it, needless to say, as pest-free as possible for the safety, health, and well-being of the students and staff that are present at the school. I want to know my children are in a safe environment while they're in school, and I don't want the school to use any pesticides unless they're absolutely necessary. Integrated pest management is a way of looking at pest problems that takes into account the pest's biology and the environment that, that pest occupies. The idea is to alter the environment so that the needs of the pest that cause it to be successful there are eliminated. Then we use a least hazardous or, or least risk approach to getting rid of the pest itself. That might be pesticides, it might be traps, but it's a way that, that has a least hazardous effect on non-target organisms, people in that environment. It's a holistic approach to pest control. Illinois Public Schools are required to implement an IPM program for indoor pest control that incorporates the guidelines developed by the Department of Public Health. If not economically feasible, schools are required to provide a letter with supporting financial documentation. In addition, schools are required to provide parents, teachers, and staff with written notification of any non-bait pesticide application. We decided to practice IPM here because it's the safest route to go. There's a lot of concern with the environmental hazards and the contact of the students with those hazards. Schools need to practice IPM for a couple of reasons. Uh, mostly because it's the better way to do pest control. It is more effective, it is a more longer lasting method of pest control. It will get them better pest control for, for their dollar. One of the concerns with going to an IPM program was how much the cost would be and what the cost difference between that and the old method would be. We put it out for bid and we were happy to find out that IPM was no more costly than the, the older method. The other reason for doing IPM in schools is it tends to reduce pesticide applications and it reduces the amount of pesticide that's going into a school. And children are very young, obviously, and Pesticides affect them in different ways than they affect adults. And anytime you can reduce the amount of pesticide going into an environment, that's a good thing. Oh, Steve. Oh, hi, Dave. How you doing? Just fine, thanks. How's How are you? Doing? I'm doing just great. How's everything going at the school? Very good. Okay, I want to show you that um, those ants that we found down by the boys' locker room. That's okay. really cool. And that one door. In the receiving room that has the, the gap underneath. Oh, okay. Well, well school is an attractive environment for pests because it has just about everything that a pest would need. You know, schools are located uh, with grounds around them and playgrounds and plantings and everything, so pests have a way to live close to the building. You've got people coming in and out all the time from all different kinds of environments, and you have food being delivered or food being prepared on the premises, and then people are storing stuff in their lockers, and it's, it's just an ideal situation for most pests. Prevention of pests in a school environment really has three aspects to it. One is just keeping them outside, making sure the doors are closed, there's screens on the windows, there are tight seals on the doors and windows. You gotta keep the building sealed up and make sure that if you've got cracks in the walls, you caulk them, or if there's gaps under your doors, you put door sweeps on. You do whatever it takes in order to seal your building up to keep the pests out. Here we've got a gap underneath this door. It's a gap large enough for a mouse to get in. Now, we already issued a work order for this door, and the school is going to repair it. In the meantime, the pest control company has put traps out on this side and that side of the door. The second thing is building maintenance. This keeps them from moving around inside the building. Holes in the walls that get plugged up, cracks that are in the floors, you just get those sealed up. Good vacuuming and cleaning skills. Uh, spiders are sometimes an issue. Spiders are nothing more than a housekeeping issue. You, you vacuum them up, you get rid of the cobwebs, and you keep after it and it'll be gone. Sanitation. The idea is to keep the insects or the pests from having food and water. And you have to clean uh, from the pest point of view, not just from a people point of view. Food. You have to keep the food cleaned up. If there's no food, 
you don't have the past. The kitchen is an important location in an integrated pest management program. I mean, here we have food, we have water, we have warmth, we have everything that a pest needs if it gets into the building to start an infestation. Now, fortunately, our school here has had integrated pest management in place for about five or six years. So most of these issues are not important. They don't have pest populations to worry about. But if pest populations are introduced, we need to worry about some things like this dripping faucet. If you have insects or rodents coming in, they're going to look for water. This dripping faucet will provide all the water they need. Things like these utensils need to be washed, cleaned up at the end of the day. Trash cans need to be emptied on a regular basis. And by that I mean daily. At the end of the day, don't let them sit overnight until the morning. Pests like clutter. They like to get into stuff and hide. So on our regular inspections of the kitchen, we go through the baskets that they have stacked here. Because if pest populations are going to get started, this is one of the places they're going to live first. Now we're inspecting the place on a regular basis. And we're looking into those places where the insects are likely to get started if they're introduced into the building. So we're under the sinks, we're behind the equipment, we're digging into the corners, and we're, we're not here, we leave behind these little sticky traps. These work for us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And when we come back, we can check the traps, and if any insects have been crawling around, we don't have to be here when they do, we can find them on the sticky traps. Monitoring, whether it's a visual inspection or leaving the traps behind, is an important part of integrated pest management. So then the question comes up, you find an animal, you find an insect in the school building, now what do you do? Okay, well I'll tell you what we'll do, there's only a couple here, so next time you get a work order together, why don't you have them seal up the crack that the ants are coming out of, okay, okay, and uh, we'll get some baits in here, if they were worse, if we had more of them, we'd put some baits down, okay, so they could take it back, but since you only got a couple, let's not, uh, you know, let's uh, act on the safe side and not put any pesticide out. What is the IPM approach to getting rid of that animal? Well, the first thing you need to do is decide whether or not it's a pest. If you've got a couple of ants in a hallway and they aren't harming anybody, well, it's more of a nuisance than a pest, you mop them up. If you've got a spider hanging in a window, well, you can make the case that that's beneficial, but you take them out with a vacuum cleaner. These aren't really pest problems. If we should find a pest in one of our schools, uh, the first step is to contact the custodial department. After that, we will evaluate the situation and see whether or not we need to contact our outside contractor to come in and take care of the problem or if it's something that we can simply handle in-house. Uh, quite often it's just a housekeeping issue of cleaning them up and getting rid of them. If you do decide that what you've got is a pest that needs to be eliminated, what you have to do is take a good hard look at the pest and its biology and find out what is happening in that environment that causes that pest to be there and to be successful. Then you eliminate those things. You get rid of the things that cause those pests to be there. So you've done all your integrated pest management work. Cracks and crevices are sealed, the food's cleaned up, the water's dried up, the pests don't have a way in, they don't have anything to eat or drink, and they've got no place to live. Well, now you still have to eliminate the pest population. Traps work very, very well, and for rodents, I recommend them highly. For insects, you have to use the least hazardous approach, and to me, that pretty much means baits. Now, what I like about the containerized bait is once the problem is eliminated, you can remove the bait. In order to track and monitor what goes on in our buildings, monthly inspections are provided by the contractor. And those inspections are forwarded to me, and I review them every month. And that way I can keep an eye on what's going on in the building and whether or not we have a reoccurring problem. Oh, hi, Lisa. I was just going over your, your uh, monthly reports on your inspections for insects, mm -hmm. and I don't see that we found any in the last month. That's really cool That's and good. great. Good news. The IPM program is really working well. I think it is. Ron, yes. you know that door in the back? We need to put a uh, weather strip on there. All right. Okay. Have you guys had any problems with the bugs coming no. in? Never Notice anything? anything? Another important part of integrated pest management is the education of the students and staff and their involvement in the process. Um, a lot of times, it's the students and staff that actually define whether or not you have a pest problem or if a particular animal is a pest. And they will contribute to the conditions that cause the pests to be problems. Uh, missing the trash can when you're throwing out your lunch, leaving the doors open when they don't need to be open. Uh, these sorts of things will actually cause pests to be a problem in the schools. And the education can get people involved in eliminating these conditions.
It's important that a school implement a program such as IPM to number one, to control the pest, but number two, to make it as safe to the environment of the students and staff that are present as possible. The IPM program really works so well that we don't see any circumstance for we're going to have to use spray pesticides ever again. Better results, less pesticides, um, better effect on the environment. It's just a more effective process all around. I think it's great that this school is implementing the IPM program. They're controlling any pest that they have without using any unnecessary pesticides, and I know it's a safer place for my child to be in school. It provides certainly a safer environment for our students, and after all, that's our number one goal.